I'm about to go to a friend's house because when I was there yesterday, I ordered myself an ice cream sandwich. It's my favorite dessert ever, that and a brownie sundae, but I gotta go there to continue eating it. So I packed my tote with Divine Rivals by Rebecca Ross. I'm currently, I actually don't know how many pages because I originally bought this on Kindle when I was on the plane reading it and then I ordered it on Amazon. Then when it got here, I started reading it physically, but then last night I was reading it on Kindle. So I've been reading it on both. So I'm on page 100, exactly. And it's so good. I'm so excited to read it today. It really feels like a reward to read today after working, which is when you know a book is good. And when I don't even want to read that much of it because I want it to last longer, that's when you know that you really, really love a book. You can tell you really love a book when there's like a little bit of sadness associated with reading it because that's how much you enjoy it. And you don't want it to end. Let's go get this ice cream sandwich. <laughs> Afraid, emotions getting in your way. Afraid. Morning. Monday morning, I went on a run, got showered up, and I'm on page 284 of Divine Rivals, and there's only 350 pages, so I have a coffee, and I wanna sit here and finish this book right now. I am a little bit sad because I thought it would be a five-star read for sure, and then there was kind of a lull in the story where the pacing kind of dropped off for me, where I was kind of getting more of like a four-star vibe, or maybe a four and a half, or 4.25. It's really good. It's a really sweet romance, which you guys know is like my favorite thing in the entire world. There connecting more on like a intellectual and emotional level, which I love. And the stakes are so high because they are in the midst of a war. So everything about this so far is just exactly what I would like. And I feel like it's because I'm just in a little bit of like a reading slump. I hate saying that because then it's such a scary term. Like then you're always thinking like, am I in a reading slump right now? When maybe you just are reading slower because life is busy and stuff like that. But yeah, that's the update. But I don't know a rating for sure. I just need to read the rest of the book. I feel like I have to puke, but I have to go to Barnes and Noble. You go over if you only knew. Shining gates. Okay, it's later now. I did finish Divine Rivals today and I'm happy and sad because when I first started reading it, I thought I was gonna give it a five star for sure, especially because all of the people that I watch and have similar book taste to gave it a five star. And then when some stuff got kind of slow for me, I feel like I got a little bit emotionally removed because I was getting bored. So then when the emotions started picking back up again for the relationship, I was a little removed. So I'm gonna give it four stars instead of five, but I'm so excited for the sequel. It's like a five star feeling book, but it wasn't quite there for me. I can understand why so many people gave it five stars and it gave me that vibe so heavily at the beginning. And I feel like if I wasn't in a reading slump and I read this within like two days, I could have given it a five star. So it was one of those like circumstantial things I feel like for me with my attention span and everything being kind of low lately. But I highly recommend you read this book. If you haven't read it, I think you should pick it up and read it. I didn't know it was young adult, but it's so good. The romance is so sweet and wholesome and just based off of little letters they write each other. It's so cute. So I finished this. And since I finished it, I didn't really have anything else on my immediate TBR that I wanted to get to, but there's two new releases that I ran to Barnes and Noble to get. These are actually, all three of these books are so exciting. The first one being What Happens After Midnight by K.L. Walther. This is so exciting because, let me pick it up real quick. I read this book by her last year, The Summer of Broken Rules. It's a YA summary romance book and I gave it five stars. I was obsessed with it. And this is her new release this year. Also covers, so cute, love the theme. I think this one's set in a high school. Oh, a boarding school. It's kind of like Zoe 101. Oh, the little cover pages are so cute. Look how cute that is. And then I got the third book in the Red Rising series by Pierce Brown, which is a adult sci-fi series that I've been reading. I read the first two books and they're both like six star reads for me. And this is the third, it's getting thicker. These are weirdly like comfort reads to me, which I 
never would have thought I would have said about like a sci-fi series, but the writing and the characters, you just feel so close to and invested in that even though the world is a little bit confusing, the characters just feel so close to home and you root for them so hard. So I'm so excited to start this. I'm a little overwhelmed though, because I only had like a few books in between the last two, but I'm scared that I forgot like a character's name or something. And lastly, I didn't know this came out already. I'm so excited because Riley Sager's new book, who is my favorite thriller author, came out with The Only One Left and The House Across the Lake by him is one of my six star reads. It's probably one of my most like hit or miss six star reads for people because the plot twists in that book are, they fall under like a certain category that some people don't like in a plot twist. They feel like it's kind of like a cop out, but I personally was not expecting it at all and was obsessed with the entire story start to finish. So I'm so excited for this. I don't know what to start first. Like I wanna start all three of these at the same time. So hopefully this just pulls me right out of my little reading slump. If I read all of these in this video, it'd be an amazing reading blog. And to top it all off, Ryan took me to Sephora and I only went to like restock like my face wash and my face moisturizer and a dry shampoo, but I also got Laneige has new flavors of their lip sleeping masks. So I got the sweet candy one and it smells like cotton candy. It smells so good and I've been needing a new chapstick before bed, so I'm so excited about this. I haven't been in a Sephora in so long and when I walked in there, I was like, this place is dangerous. I'm glad I haven't been here in a while. I'll do a super fast haul. Way dry shampoo, First Aid Beauty Ultra Repair Cream, Youth to the People Facial Cleanser, and a mini travel size Orbe Travel Dry Shampoo. Those are my restocks. I went a little crazy. I actually use all of those products literally every single day. Those are my staples. It's time to choose one of these to start tonight. I'm so excited. Oh gosh, what am I choosing? Saps Electrolyte. It's my new favorite fun drink. Not sponsored, but I wish. morning it's wednesday now and i'm on page 140 of the only one left by riley sager and i love it so far i feel like he just chooses the best settings for books like this one is a house that's on this super steep cliff over the ocean and then the house across the lake it's a lake house and setting is just massive for me because i even at nighttime right before going to bed have just been reading a little bit of what happens after midnight so that i can read something happy and i'm only 20 pages into this but i really like the boarding school location in her other book it was martha's vineyard so i I feel like setting is a really big thing for me with books. If I like the setting, I'm just much more likely to like the books. So I'm gonna sit on the couch, drink my coffee and read. And then I have to go take my car in for maintenance and I'm gonna read while I wait for them to do maintenance. And we'll see how much I can get done today. finished it last night and it was so good. I love Riley Sager, I still do. I love how many plot twists he puts in his books. It's like he puts an unhinged amount of plot twists that it's almost comical, but it's so good. Like I feel like they're all fair plot twists where it's like, okay, that's, that's a good one. Like they're not stupid ones, you know what I mean? I feel like this one was more similar to The House Across the Lake than any of his other thrillers. I've read Final Girls, Survive the Night, House Across the Lake, Lock Every Door. Yeah, I've read four of his other thrillers. And I also read the interview in the back of this book with him and they were calling this a more gothic thriller book because the house is like kind of scary, which typically I would hear a review like that and not like it because I don't like haunted houses at all. But I don't really think it gave that vibe very much. Riley Sager is the exception to all things that I normally hate because if you told me the genre of plot twist that is in House Across the Lake, I would avoid that book at all costs, but I love that book so much. So I don't really know. It's always hard for me to rate books fairly when I'm obsessed with an author because immediately after I just wanted to give it five stars because I loved the plot twist. They were crazy. They got me good. I thought I knew what was gonna happen and I didn't as per usual. And I also feel like if an author is so good that you read like more than a handful of their books and every time they publish a new one, you just buy it immediately, there's in a different category for you. But I do think objectively, this was like a four star book for me, but it just holds such a special place in my heart because it's Riley Sager. So it's like a different four star, but I know that it's not like a five star book because I've kind of have already forgotten about the characters. And I don't think about it the way that I think about House Across the Lake. Like I still picture scenes in that book. I still think about the characters 
characters. I would love to reread that book. So it's in a different level for sure. I highly recommend this book. I haven't even read a thriller lately, but if he publishes a book, I have to read it. So I highly recommend super fast read. Read it in two days and I have not been reading books that fast at all lately. So that is also super satisfying. And now I'm 20 pages into what happens after midnight. And I'm going to sink my teeth into this book today on this beautiful summer day with this beautiful summer book. And I'm very excited. Hi Pookies. You want to read? Reading party with the Pookies. I'm on page... Happy Friday, by the way. I'm on page 118. The book is fun. The book is easy to get through. The text is large. I'm having a good time. I had no idea what the plot of this book was, but it's basically set at a boarding school. And you're following Lily as she is a senior at this boarding school. And every year there's a senior prank by someone that you don't know. And she gets involved with helping with the senior prank. And that's what I'm reading about right now, basically. Oh, no. It's Saturday now? Almost said Sunday, but it's Saturday. I have 40 pages of this book left, and I think I've counted like three or four Taylor Swift references. Like she'll weave the title of a song into a sentence. I've seen Illicit Affair, This Is Me Trying. I can't remember the other ones now, but thought that would be a fun note for the Swifties. I wasn't liking this book that much in the middle of it, but towards the end now, and I am really liking the sort of conflict that's going on right now, actually. So this will be an interesting rating on this book. I don't know what I'm gonna think of it by the end. It's nighttime now and I finished the book. It was good, it was sweet, but I'm not gonna lie. I'm a little bit sad because Summer Broken Rules. Oh, hi guys. <laughs> Summer Broken Rules is a five star read for me and I think of it so fondly. I love the Visco summer vibes that book has. And I liked the romance. I loved the plot. Loved everything about that book. This one, the idea of it being at a boarding school is really cool. It rhymes as well. So that would, you would just would think it would be sick, but I don't know. She, I, yeah. there were a lot of character names and then a lot of building names. And it just all kind of got confusing. Like there were a lot of things where I realized I was reading and I didn't know exactly what was happening. You can just see the corner of it. just put that right there. So I feel like that was just a little bit distracting and if she would have made it a little bit simpler, I think it could have been more enjoyable because that was just all very distracting from the romance plot that we're getting, which is kind of like a second chance romance plot. And once the romance came in more at the end, I really liked it, but I just feel like she didn't focus on it at all. And it's what made the first book by her so great. So I'm a little sad because I think this is like a three star, a three and a half star. It was still enjoyable to me by the end, but I kind of just wanted to finish it and move on. And in the middle, I got kind of bored. And some of the jokes that they were saying were like phrases that they would use, especially like with curse words, I just thought were not very funny. And it felt very YA, which usually when I'm reading YA, it's clearly like for a younger audience, but I feel immersed in the story still. This one kind of took me out of it where I was like, oh, is this supposed to be funny to like a younger person? Cause it's not funny to me. Not a bad book though. When she writes the romance, it's good. So folks, this means we have now read three books in this reading vlog. It's kind of funny cause I had really high expectations for all of these books, which maybe skewed my reviews because these were all, well, these two were amazing books, but these two both got four stars when I thought I would be giving both of them five, but they're still amazing books. If you want a thriller, you should pick this one up. I love Riley Sager. And honestly, you should read Divine Rivals. Like I know I didn't give it a five star, but I highly recommend it and I still loved it. It. And then let me know your thoughts on this book in the comments. I'm not sure what I will be reading next. I'm gonna try a few pages of Morning Star by Pierce Brown. It'll probably be too much to fit into this week's reading vlog. So hopefully I'll just be back with more reading vlogs soon. But I also update my Instagram stories as I'm reading books. So you guys can keep up with me over there or on my main channel. And I will see you guys somewhere else on the internet. Goodbye.